So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, that you are amazing. Father, that you have called us um, out of the grave. You tell us to rise up. I pray, God, today that you take the word out by the Spirit of the living God and we all hear it in our own language. I pray today that the young people here just storm heaven. Amen. Storm heaven from the nursery to Sunday school to our youth to the adults that we all storm heaven today in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, for what you have done already in the heavenlies and we call it to earth. And I thank you, Lord. You're amazing. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. It's His breath in our lungs, right? Amen. I keep thinking about that. That's like one of my favorite songs, but um, for sure, because um, I think about the Lord and I think about His exhale and my inhale and just... The difference that it makes, you know, breath, you know, people that have to be on the ventilators right now and as they're, as they're coming off them, they have high anxiety because they're afraid that they're not going to be able to breathe on their own. And so it, it causes high anxiety as they're weaning them off from that. And so um, I think about that because I think, gosh, how much, how much would we know if the Lord started to pull his breath away from us, you know? which gives us life that keeps us sustained. And so, um, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I feel like, you know, I can't breathe and I just feel like life has just been, you know, just down and around your head and your ears and in your life and you just, you just can't like breathe as deep and peaceful as you normally do. And I think those are times and seasons that we all need to draw closer to the Lord and just rest and just breathe. And really concentrate on what you're breathing. Not the smells, but the life. Because Christ loves us. And he's doing something for us. He's doing something in us and through us for the world. Amen. There was a song that we sang today during pre-service. And it was pretty amazing. And we're, we're going to close with it today. Um, and it's called, um, it's by Evelation. It's called, uh, it's called by Evelation. Anyways, it's called, yes, Elevation, but it's Kingdom Come. Okay. And I was thinking about that today as we were singing it. And we, we sang it twice because it's such an anointed song. And I'm going to go to that in just a minute. But I want you to go with me to Luke chapter 9. Um, I don't know if any of you guys watch Chosen, but Chosen is, it's, it's on, um, you can put it on your phone if you don't have... Um, Roku, otherwise you can put it on your phone and throw it up to Roku and download the angel thing and then you can watch watch the first and second season of it. But um, I was watching it last night and this morning when I was in prayer and in worship, I kept seeing the scene of where the disciples, you know, were asking Jesus to give them the ability to call down fire on some people that rejected them. Mm -hmm. So when we were in pre-service today, I was, that's all I could see. That's all I could see. And then um, Edie talked about um, unity in our circle today. And fresh uh, wind is what Shelley's whole theme was and story was this morning in our um, pre-service. It was pretty amazing. And if you come in like... You wouldn't leave that way because it was just so filling. It was so um, life-changing worship this morning. So anyways, in Luke 9, um, in 49, I'm going to start there. And this is, this is um, of course, the disciples are with him. It says, Now John answered and said, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name. We forbid them because... He doesn't follow, he's not, follow, he does, he's not one of us. But Jesus said to him, don't forbid him. He's not, if he's not against us, then he's on our side. Amen. Now it came to pass when the time had come for him to be received up. <coughs> he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem because they been, had been in Samaria. He sent messengers 
before his face. And as they went, they entered the village of the Samaritans to prepare him, to prepare for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just like Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, Do you not know what manner of spirit you are of? For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. Now I'm going to read this again, but I'm going to read it this time out of the Amplified. I'm going to go to 51. And when the time was almost come for Jesus to be received up to heaven... He steadfastly and determined, determinedly set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers before him, and they reached and entered Samaritan village, a Samaritan village to make things ready for him. But the people would not welcome or receive or accept him because his face was set if he was going to go to Jerusalem. And his disciples, James and John, observed this, and they said, Lord, do you wish us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elijah? But Jesus turned and rebuked them severely. He said, you do not know for what sort of spirit you are. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. For the penalty, for the penalty of eternal death... And they journeyed on to another village. And I thought, wow, God, this is definitely where people can be today. Because of the division that's in the world, the division is really bad. The things that have gone on in this world in the past couple of years, but it's also gone on for centuries. History repeats itself. But there's such division in the air that if you're not careful, you're not going to be able to walk in unity. And we as people of God, as the disciples of Jesus Christ, we definitely don't want to call fire down on people, destroy them, because they're not going to accept what we believe. And I know that's hard because we really know the truth, and the truth is what makes you free, but many people are blind to that truth. And I was thinking about this because... Uh, we know somebody, um, and they there's the wor it's the world that has divided marriages now, where people have left each other over shots and politics and things like that. And so the thing is, is that you know you can just see it, and it's our it's for us to pray and to love and to bring forth the good news of the gospel, right? And to show different to the world that we're okay, that we can walk in peace, and that we can be Jesus' disciple. Jesus understood. He's like, he turned and rebuked them severely and said, you know, you don't even understand what spirit you're walking in right now. You want to call fire down on these people because they won't receive you, and they won't receive me, and you're, you want to defend me? Don't do that. Let's just go to another village. Let's just move on. We're not going to fight. We're not going to call fire down on people to destroy them because people destroy people. And we know that it's darkness that's doing it, but it's nonetheless, people destroy people. And the fire is on their tongues, the things that they say and the things that they do, right? And so I know this from my own life because I know that I could cut up pretty good with my tongue and say the things and then you would regret them. And then, you know, those things you, you just can't take back. But I believe that God is calling us to unite, and we're to unite in Christ, nothing else. Um, and i got to tell you about a word as well, because um, I got a word, uh, somebody brought me a word the other day, and when they brought me the word, and I'm going to go there, because this is important, 
You have to understand that when God is bringing a word and the Holy Spirit is moving, we cannot be in our flesh. Because if we're in our flesh, you know, which it's really easy to be there in our own intellect, that when we give things away to people and they don't receive them the way that we think that they should, it's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is to be the vessel of honor that God has chosen to bring something through, right? To bring word, to, to connect all the dots so that God's kingdom can come. And he's the one who chooses how it comes and, and what's going on. So right now, just really quick, I feel really, really led to pray uh, for marriages right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray a protection around and about marriages. I pray, Father God, that where division has come because of worldly things and, and people wanting to have their own way, I right now, Father God, ask that that spirit of division would be removed out of marriages, would be removed out of friendships, would be removed out of families, that they would understand that each person has a personal walk with you, and we, we, we release these things, Father God, from heaven to earth for people in Jesus' name. I pray, Father, that you would bring a peace into marriages and a peace into relationships where the enemy has wiggled in that divider device and that you would remove it in the name of Jesus. So I pray right now, Father, that you would just bless these people. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. So you're just going to have to go with me today because I don't, I, I really, there's a lot going on within me. And so I want to... Um, tell you about this word that I had gotten and how I had gotten it and how maybe someone else may have received it. But it was a word that was brought to me and it was an old word that was given to me before and, um, and the heart of the person was beautiful. Um, but like me, sometimes, and this is why, what I try to teach in discipleship class, don't add to the word. Don't figure it out. Don't even explain it. Because when it's coming from the Spirit, that's the only one that can really bring revelation to it. You don't want to be Holy Spirit Junior. Now, you're going to have your own perception of what that word is for that person. But your perception is going to probably be blinded by the way you might view that person or you might know things about their lives. So I want to give you something here today because you are going to be going out and you're going to be bringing people together by the word of the Lord. Words that come fresh from heaven rather just come like boom like that or a word that comes from the word of God. And so we want to bring unity to the body, unity to our community and God is going to put words in your mouth for other people. The most important thing that you want to do is keep your mind out of the word, right? It's not for you. It's not for you. You're just the vessel. It's for somebody else. So you have to allow the Holy Spirit to, to bring revelation of that word by His Spirit. Revelation is in the Spirit. It is not in the flesh. Revelation comes by Spirit, not flesh. And so when you bring a word to somebody, you've got to know, and you know it's from God, keep your hands off it. Keep your lips off it. Just give what God has given you, understand? Because that's the way you bring a word. Now, I will tell you, your flesh will fight that because your flesh is going to want to add to it because your flesh is going to be uncomfortable because the Spirit's leading, right? Spirit and flesh are contrary to one another. It's like trying to put two magnets together, and you just can't do it. But if you flip one over, then they lock. And so that means that you're, when you are uncomfortable, just resist that flesh and stay in the spirit. And this is really important, not only for healing rooms and ministry time up here, but now your walks out in this community because God is going to download things into you for people. And you're not going to be comfortable with it. You're going to want to explain it. You're going to want to water it down. You're going to want to fluff it up. You're going to want to, you know, you're going to be the one uncomfortable, not the person getting the word. You are, because you have to shut the flesh down so the spirit can move. Amen? All right, do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, so this word was given to me, and this has to do with us. And um, it, it was, it's more than what I'm going to read, but um, what I had read is, um, let me see. I'm going to start in Deuteronomy 4.15. And so there was more to this than what I'm going to give you. But I finally opened up my Bible as somebody was giving me the word and I read it. I read, I read it. Um, and so as I read it, 
God started speaking to me because it's by spirit. And so the person that brought me the word, just they just started reading it. They may have had perceptions of their own, but they were quiet because me, I just take over, right? And so um, it says, idolatry forbidden. It says, you saw form, or excuse, excuse me, I got to get out of this is the wrong version. Take careful heed to yourselves. For you saw no form when the Lord spoke to you at Horeb, the mountain, out of the midst of the fire, lest you act corruptly and make yourselves a carved image in the form of any figure, the likeness of a male or a female, the likeness of an animal, that is on earth, the likeness of winged birds and flies that flies on the earth, in the likeness of any creeping thing on the ground. Oops, I got to go back. Sorry. Because it had to do with listening. And it said that in this passage that the Lord was going to speak to me out of the fire. Well, a lot of times when you think fire, you think, oh man, I'm going to melt. I'm going I'm to go through this really bad time. Fire is painful. Fire is hard. Fire burns things up. Fire seems negative. But yet we all pray for the fire of the Holy Spirit. And so what in this passage, and I don't know exactly right where the verse is at. Well, well, 12. Thank you. I have to go up to 12. Thank you. Thank you. Then the Lord spoke to you out of the fire. You heard the sound of words but saw no form. There was only a voice. He declared to you his covenant, the Ten Commandments which he commanded you to follow and then wrote them down on two stone tablets. And the Lord directed me at the time to teach you the degrees and the laws. Now this isn't part of it. The first part is him speaking out of the fire. So even this is all there, I started listening to the Spirit. And then it said for me to take heed, to pay attention, to listen, what's going on. And so as I'm reading this, God starts speaking to me. And he says, the fire that I'm talking about here is revival. It is the fire of revival. It is not you being in the fire and you, you, you know, you dying and oh my gosh, here I go again. Because at first when this came to me, I'm like, I am not ready for a negative word. I am sorry. I can't have, it. don't put nothing on my plate because I can't handle it right now. And I just didn't say anything at that moment. I just let the person present the word. But as the person presented the word, I went to the word. And I realized that God was saying to me, the fire is coming. The fire is coming. But what's very, very important is to watch yourselves very carefully. Because it says here in the word that you can make yourselves an idol. You can make your church body an idol. You can make yourself an idol. You can make that event an idol. So what God was saying to me as I'm reading this, right there, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is not the bad fire. <laughs> Although revival, I think, is kind of messy and you really don't know what's happening and it's not comfortable by any means because it's the fire of the Holy Spirit and your flesh is going to be uncomfortable and you're going to want to control it and you're going to want to try to figure it out and you just have to let the Lord burn His fire so that He can do what He wants to do in this community. Because what He wants to do, first of all, is bring unity in our homes, mm -hmm. unity in our church body, so that the, it can go out from here, the love of God. Right? So it says, therefore, watch yourselves carefully that you do not come, become corrupt, and make yourselves an idol. Now, I realize that 
the Israelites down there, they were all, they got impatient and they made an idol something they could feel, touch, smell, and all that kind of stuff. And that was the wrong thing to do. But what the Holy Spirit was speaking to me is, first of all, don't make yourself an idol. Don't make your body an idol. And also what he spoke to me in this passage was, there's going to be people coming in that may be more in what I think in the Lord than I am. Don't make them an idol. Don't follow them. Follow me. And so this word ended up being the way that it was. And so as I spoke by the Spirit what God was telling me, the person that brought me the word was like, hmm, I didn't think of that. And that's when God started speaking to me about Him and about revelation and how we are called to bring the word. We're called to bring words to people and do things for people, right? The word says prophesy, right? Everybody. And I don't mean go out and pull things. I mean, let the Lord encourage each other and stuff. But if God gives you something in prayer for somebody, just because your flesh is uncomfortable, leave it alone. Let the Spirit do His work. If you are uncomfortable, and I've been there, and you just like, their face expressions like, oh, and you just want to fix it so that you feel better. You can't. Because you take his word. You add to it, or you take from it, because your flesh is not comfortable with the reaction that you're getting. And I don't know about you, if God gives me a word like, um, on the spot, I'm good. I can usually release it and not think about it and let the Lord show them. But if God gives me a word and then I have to call somebody or message somebody, I start thinking about their word and what it means. That's not my place. My place is to minister the pure word of the Lord. And so I believe that we as Jesus' disciples... You know, here's, their, here's the disciples that made a big, huge mistake. Hey, they're not like us. I told them that they could not. They could not uh, rebuke demons. And Jesus said, don't tell them that because if they're not against us, then they're for us. How many different denominations and religions and churches are out there? And I know that they're not all good. I realize there's dead churches. I realize that. But just because they're not like us doesn't mean God isn't working there Amen. and moving there. Just because maybe they're not comfortable here at River of Life doesn't mean that they're not part of the body. Or if we're not comfortable going to a different church doesn't mean that they're not part of the body. It's just that you're not fed there because you're called to be somewhere else. Because God truly does build his church. He, built, he builds it. And he said that to us in Ezekiel. I will build this place. I will rise up and raise up this land that's been desolate. And not only is in the building and a place for us to come and worship, but our hearts. Us. But if we get caught up in being religious and we taint the word or nobody is as good as we are, then we become idols of ourselves. You understand? How's that fire going to burn? The way that God wants it to burn. So what I want to tell you today is, don't be the disciples that want to call down the fire and burn up somebody. I realize that Jesus was rejected and they loved Jesus and they believed in Jesus, but Jesus didn't need the help. He knew. But if, they, if Jesus was rejected, then so are you and I. Right? And so we want to be the disciples and the men and women of God that bring the words of truth and let the Spirit reveal the truth of the word to people. We don't want to be the disciples that want that power. God, you gave us that power, right, Jesus? You gave us the power to do more than what you did. Just like Elijah, let's just bring, let's just go burn up faith covenant. Because they're not like us. And they, they, don't, they don't receive us. Now that's not true. Just so you all know, they, that's not true at all. But you know how we can get attitudes like that? God says, get rid of the attitudes. Let's just get rid of the attitudes. Because how can unity come when we have attitudes with other people? Dan and I walked through a pretty difficult thing this past week. 
it was very nasty in my eyes I, because you know I'm I'm broken right now anyways and I'm okay to be broken God still uses me but I realize where I'm at I know where I'm at I understand where I'm at so I know that I'm vulnerable and usually when you're vulnerable the enemy comes in like a flood yep. right and so you have to be very very aware and so um, I, I know where I'm at I know that I'm very vulnerable but nonetheless it still knocked me uh, for a loop and I I reacted in the flesh 100% flesh came out 100% but by the end of it spirit took over thank you Jesus but you know all the repenting you have to do when you let the flesh live it's just so bad but you know um, and I really repented from the heart I didn't repent from the flesh I repented from the heart because that is not who I am anymore and um, but nonetheless um, I my biggest concern was I cannot let this take me back sometimes when you're in a lot of pain and you don't understand life your flesh wants to run back to your old man and try to find comfort in your old man when Jesus is right there wanting you just to rest in him and be where you're at. He, he can handle where you're at. He handled the people rejecting him. He's like, no, we're not going to call fire down and burn them up. He just moved on. And so Jesus understands where you're at. He just wants you to stay at his feet. He doesn't want you to try to figure out life. He doesn't want to try you to he doesn't want you to go and be religious and smile and people are really uncomfortable where I'm at right now, by the way. Um, it's hard for them because they're not used to seeing me where I'm at. If they want to ask me how I'm doing and I give them truth, they're like, ah, you know, but so I'm careful because otherwise they'll minister to me from the flesh and I'll just get mad. I don't need no flesh right now. You know, I don't need to hear all the religious things that we say to one another. Neither do you. What we need to do is embrace one another and love each other and let each other know that they're loved and that we'll walk with you through it Cheryl that we'll walk with you through it Dan and Tina that you're not alone so if you're led by the spirit let him speak see our flesh gets uncomfortable ah pastor oh geez what do I say you can't do that you go just go and do this and do that you're gonna be fine that's not it I'll tell you let me tell you a story this was early on when I was saved I was such a wreck I was a bad wreck and I just was still in the world one foot coming to church just barely in church in the world you know and I'm in the car I'm in the car with two people and I can say Jan's one of them, but I won't tell you who the other one is. But um, So I'm going to go to this the Baptist church over here. That's not where they attended, but they had something going on over there. And they're like, hey, do you want to go? You know, just trying to bring me into the body, into love, into unity and all that. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll go. I just went out of boredom, you know. But nonetheless, I was still broken. And um, so we're driving in the car, and the driver asks me, how I am and what's going on I tell them and they said oh just give it to Jesus and um, it'll be okay you're gonna be okay and they turned up the music <laughs> as I'm like broken you know just do this and just do that and just do that and Jan reaches over and turns it back down this is how I met Jan by the way this is how God formed our relationship She's not here, so I can talk about her. <laughs> she, and I'm telling you, this is where we connected. She turned down the music. She turned around. She told the driver, I want to hear this. This is important. So she turned around, and she heard me. As I poured out all the filth of the world and the filth in my mind and the junk and the pain and all the sorrow, <coughs> I, just I just threw up all over them. Now the driver was very uncomfortable because of religion. They just wanted me to get over it. But Jan was moved by the Spirit with compassion and the Lord showed her I needed to be heard and that she had the ears that could handle it because God put it on her heart. 
So as I did, she ministered to me by the Spirit. She didn't tell me to get better. She just loved on me. Gave me some scripture later. Gave me her phone number. Said, you're not alone. You don't have to walk alone through this. And that's how it started. And I learned so much from that because that's the heart of God. And there's going to be people coming to River of Life coming into your life that might not come to church that you have a message for from heaven but if you just see nothing but their junk and their pain and they don't know how to handle life and 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 you just want to bring fire down and get the stuff gone so you're comfortable it's wrong so I'm praying that God continues to have our hearts be turned to the Lord and compassionate for people. Because even Jesus, he said, no. No, don't do that. No. Of course, don't you know of what you're being used of right here? You are definitely not my disciple. Get away. He didn't do that. He taught them. He rebuked them. He told them, you're not right. You're wrong. Didn't you, didn't you learn from me? Didn't you learn a lesson? Your heart is so hard toward this person's, the Samaritans, the people. You can't be prejudiced. Not just of color and race, but everything. Poverty, rich, middle class. We can't be indulging in any of that. The government. You can't be and then have a pure heart. You have to trust God in it. He's given you an ability to make decisions and stuff, but still keep a pure heart because he will back you. He will give you platforms in places. I would never have a platform because I don't have that ability to do what you have the ability to do. But if we take words and we, we give them the way that we feel comfortable in giving them instead of the way that God is wanting to give them just through you, just the pure word, here you go. Let him give you revelation. Now if they ask you, I've had many people ask me what that meant. Very rarely have I given them an answer. In the, when, when BDR used to come, you know, you're, you're ministering to people that didn't even ever been in a church before, didn't know God, never encountered their the presence. And so I might minister a little bit to them, but otherwise... I would tell them just to trust God. They know His voice. And they will get the revelation of this word because it's not my word, it's His. And only He can bring revelation of that word. I can't. I can give you my, my interpretation of what that means. And if you took this word that I had gotten and you interpreted it in the flesh, it would mean something completely different. Maybe to you. But to me, the Holy Spirit was speaking. He said, the fire's coming to river of life. But I want to caution you not to make a river of life an idol. Mm -hmm. Not to make Marilee an idol, or Marcy an idol, or Lyle an idol, or Robin an idol, or Dave an idol. Because none of us are God. And if you start making people idols and you follow man, we're going to get in trouble. Understand? So don't be the disciples that call, want to call down the fire because I promise you there's going to be some riffraff coming in that you would consider like, ah, because that's exactly who we want. It's the truth. But also don't give them Christian lingo, religion, let, ask God to open your eyes to see them. So that when you see them, you minister to them by the Spirit. And you will be uncomfortable. And the first thing you're going to want to do is tell them, go do this and go do that. Don't, don't do the doing. Let's just give them the heart of Jesus. And as they grow them, we can help them walk that out. You understand? Amen. So our hearts have to be pure. So anything that you have learned to this point right here that is religious, I pray by the Spirit of the living God in my life and yours that He removes it. Because religion is an idol. 
That's why I hate it when people say, what's your religion? I'm like, ah, I'm just a follower of Jesus, you know, because that's what we are. That's what Faith Covenant is. That's what the um, Assembly of God Church is down the road. That's what some of the people in the Catholic Church are. I mean, that's, we're followers of Jesus. And, and so you can't judge them by the book of the cover when you haven't read the book. You know, and so remember that, you know, um, they, people won't understand spirit filled and they're not going to understand. I don't even know what Pentecostal means. And then I get, and then I'm starting to learn these little teeny things about Pentecostal and charismatic and they're kind of crazy people. How, why would you want that pinned on you? You know, some of the stuff from that people have done it, in the history. I'm glad that I'm like, people say, oh, you're like Pentecostal. I said, I'm not Pentecostal. I said, I'm a follower of Jesus. That's what I am. I don't know what Pentecostal is. And I don't know what charismatic is. I just know I got a heart for Jesus. Yes, I pray in the spirit. Yes, I hear from God. Yes, yes, yes on all the gifts. Yes, yes, yes on the Trinity. But all the other stuff that man has done and man has tried to bring down, I don't know any of it and I don't want to. Because I want the people to come in, and I know they're coming. I've seen them. And then this word that came, and I'm thinking, oh, great, this is all I need is another, you know, uh, uh, I don't, I've been in the fire for over a year. I just don't, I don't need any more. And God spoke to me as I read his word. Now, if I would have, if I would have rebuked it and said, no, I don't want to hear it, blah, 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 I could have done that. No, I'm not ready for no words. Just keep it. Put it in your pocket for now. I didn't do that. I, I let it come forth because the heart was pure. And they asked. They wanted to give me it. It was a very small, tiny word. It was called, it was take heed, listen. But then as I read it, I realized what God was saying. It's a good word. And it's for our church. But at the same time, People don't agree, don't call fire down on them. If people don't agree and they reject you and they reject me and they reject River of Life and they reject you, just go to the next town. Not literal. Go to the next place. Because see, Jesus stayed on course. He didn't let being received or not received stop him from where he was to go to Jerusalem. He didn't. And that's us. As followers of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Emily, i got to tell you just really quick, you keep highlighting. I'm sorry. I hate to call you out all the time. Um, but God is doing a great work in you. And um, it's He's going to increase your wisdom. And He's going to increase your word. Uh, you're going to get a greater understanding by the Holy Spirit of the things that He's saying. Again, this is a good message. You just have to give it. Silver platter, here you go. I don't know what it means. Just, you know, I can direct you where I got it in the word or something. But you just give it. And so what the Lord's going to do is put more word in you. And you're going to be a little bit like a kitty wampus. You know, very uncomfortable. But it, you'll be like walking and all of a sudden you'll be like, oh man. And you don't know Tina. And, and God is going to be speaking to you about the people that are around you. There will be times you will have to step out and give them something or say something. Or it will just be for you to know so that you can pray for people. Okay? So that's what I'm hearing for you today. And so um, I want to go just really quick. Tim's going to get the song Kingdom Come Ready. But um, I'm going to read you the lyrics. And as I read the lyrics, I, I believe I have some words today for people. So I'm just going to speak them as I go. It says, May your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Forever you reign forever you reign, so let hope swell in our lives. And we will be the church to live out your heart, God. So I feel like, Cheryl, your heart's going to swell. Your spiritual heart is going to swell. And, and what's going to happen in that is you're going to end up walking in a greater grace and a greater mercy. 
that God is going to give you an understanding as to things you haven't quite understood because you've been trying to filter them through your personality and your past. And the Lord says that the kingdom of, the kingdom of heaven is within you, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And He is going to remove a veil that has stopped you from being able to see the more that you so desired. So I want to give that to you today. Oh God, rise up in us. Oh God, rise up in us. We'll show the world how you love. Jesus, take our hearts and make it yours. Salvation reign over us. The fight was won on the cross. We take heart. For you have overcome the world. Jessica. Oh, I got two Jessicas in the room, so I'm going to hit you both with one stone. God is saying he wants to rise up in you in a greater way. Now, I'm going to talk to you each individually. So, Jessica, the Lord says that he's given you a platform. But sometimes you step off it because you're uncomfortable. And you look at you in the mirror and you see you. When God is going to open your eyes to see beyond the mirror and see him in you. Because the platform he has given you is to increase the kingdom of heaven. So, in this, oh God, rise up in, it, in us is for you. Rudy, I hear the word salvation reigns over you. That sometimes salvation, it's a big word and we understand it kind of, but sometimes we're like, gosh, like I really don't feel anything. I don't like, but God says that you're faithful. You're very faithful. And the Lord is going to bring more revelation of the things that he has for you. And he says, the fight was won on the cross, Rudy. You don't have to worry about it. And, you, and God's going to give you a courage. There's already courage within you, but what he's going to do is bring it forth. And you're going to see that courage, and you're going to understand that it's coming from the Spirit of God, that it's not Rudy. And he says that, um, he says that, that he's given you his heart. And sometimes there's pebbles that get into that heart that stop you from moving in a direction that I believe that God is saying he's calling you to do. So in Jesus' name and by the Spirit, I remove that pebble. It's not a boulder. It's just a pebble. But it's enough to make the current of the river to flow around it. And God wants it out so that it can flow freely in your life. And that is him. He says, don't shrink back. He'll be there with you. You just have to take that step of faith and the Lord will fill your mouth with words and wisdom to speak to others. That's for you. Jessica, rise up in us. The Lord says that you struggle. Uh, and it's not because you want to. It's like there's something there. And in the name of Jesus right now, I'm removing it because I have the power in the Lord Jesus Christ. God says that you're worthy. God is the worthy one, but because of Him, it makes you worthy of serving Him. You don't have to know what that is that He wants you to do yet, because all He wants you to do is just to continue to walk forward in Him and let the Lord rise up in you. And He says that you're analytical. Analytical, I don't know what analytical means, but I'm hearing the word analytical. And he says analytical is a worldly word, and he doesn't want you to be analytical because that stops you from trusting. And he's asking you to trust him. He says that he will show through you the world how you love. But first of all, He's just wanting you to trust because that's stopping you. So I'm just going to give that to you. <laughs> yeah. Next verse. May your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Forever you reign, forever you reign. Let hope swell up in our lives 
And we will be the church to live out your heart. Becca and Tiffany, that's for you. The Lord says forever he will reign. Forever he will reign. The power is his, the glory is his, but it's important for you to receive all that he has for you. Don't worry about your young, it's your age, I just want to live and be who I am. And God is saying no. He says that he wants hope to swell in your lives, not to let your hope be deferred because it makes your heart grow sick. He says keep hope before you, which is Jesus Christ. He's the hope of our glory, right? The hope of his glory. And he said that you will be the ones to live out his heart. You will. In other words, people are going to watch you and they're going to be like, wow, what? what's the different? You know, I'm not saying you're going to do everything right, so don't put this on yourself. Let the Holy Spirit bring it through you. But you still have to yield to Him so that that can happen. But He said that you will be the church. That's scary, isn't it? <laughs> you will be the church to live out His heart. I feel like God is saying to tell you to reach out. There are some people that you've even felt like you want to reach out to, but you're just afraid that they might reject you. And like, and so part of our message today about how the people in the Samaritans rejected Jesus and Jesus moved on. Rejection will come, but there's also going to come people that will receive and that you will lead into the kingdom of heaven. So I'm just going to give that to you today. So, rise Raise, raise your hopeful voices, make a joyful noise, and sing unto the King of Glory. Raise your hopeful voices, make a joyful noise, and sing unto the King of Glory. We'll show the world how you love God. We'll show the world how you love Jesus. Take our hearts, Lord. So I'm just going to speak this over all of us. Lord, I pray that you will take our hearts where they've been battered and bruised, I pray, God, that you'll take our hearts where we've tried to do the right thing, but we've been religious, and then we get mad when people won't believe us, and, and then we get bitter without understanding it. I pray right now that you remove bitterness out of our hearts today. I pray that you move judgment and being critical. Any low self-esteem, I tell it right now that it has to leave. Because, Jesus, we want to take your heart. We want to walk in your wisdom. We want to grow in you. I pray that you bring revelation to everybody hearing my voice as they open up the Word of God and read your Word. I pray, God, that that you bring revelation as we set at your feet without opening up the Word but just listening to you. You are the Word. I pray that you cleanse us. And I pray, Father, that you use... What's that drain cleaner? Drano. Drano. <laughs> Clean our pipes. Get all the gunk that over the years has got to the sides so the flow of the water can't go freely. Do what you need to do, Lord, because we're here to unify in the name of Jesus. So, Father God... The fight was won on the cross, and we are your followers. We ask for courage. We ask for your love and your compassion and your word to flow through us. Freely, in Jesus' name I pray.